Hello everyone, welcome to our lecture on communication aids and strategies using tools of technology. Now this lecture shall have two parts. The first one is the presentations as modes of communication and part two would focus on using technology for communication. The first one is on the presentations as modes of communication. But first, let's take a look at the types of presentation so to have a clearer view on what our purpose would be later when we present our own presentations. The first one would be the explanatory presentations. When you say explanatory, you are mainly imparting information. The second one is descriptive, wherein we present certain steps or procedures to our audience. The third one is persuasive, which is mainly aimed at convincing our audience to side with what we are talking about or what we are explaining. So let's take a look at the steps of presentation. The first one is planning and researching. Of course, before anything else, we have to plan and prepare for our presentation. So this includes the process of researching because we have to import information which are knowledge and, of course, fact-based and something that is substantial so that our audience would learn something from our presentation. The next one is organizing. So it covers taking a look at the different parts of your speech, namely the introduction, the body, conclusion, and of course the question and answer portion after your presentation. So for the introduction, we have to remember that our aim here is to connect with our audience. We have to establish rapport with our audience. That's why it's important that before we start our speech, we have to set the mood among our audience. We have to wake them up. If, for example, the time of the presentation is 2 o'clock to 3 o'clock perhaps in the afternoon, okay, or just right after lunch, we have to set the agenda. We have to make sure that they are provided with an outline of how the presentation would do about. And of course, eye contact is very important. You have to look into the eyes of your audience so as to make sure that they are listening. And of course, so that they would also know that you are sincere in what you are saying. It is one of the secrets in establishing rapport with your audience in the first place. The next is the body wherein we discuss the nitty-gritty part of our presentation. So the technique here or the strategy here is for us to use visual aids so that our audience would easily relate to what we are saying. Apart from the visual aids, we have to have an outline so that they would know how we analyze things and how we discuss the things that we will be presenting in our presentation. Of course, we have to summarize everything and emphasize main points, the key terms or the concepts that need to be retained on the minds of our listeners or our viewers or our audience in general. Next, we have to be able to relate to the audience's needs. That's the reason why establishing rapport in the introduction is very important. So that we can be sure that they are tuned in to what we are saying as we discuss the contents of our speech or our presentation. Next, we have to make use of direct language as we do not try to impress them through our rich vocabulary, through our highfalutin words. As much as possible, we still stick to the KISS formula, which stands for keep it short and simple, so that everyone in the audience would be able to relate despite their differing academic backgrounds. 
And of course, we have to learn how to pace ourselves. As much as possible, our presentation should be not too fast, not too slow. Okay? We have to be guided by our duration, by our time limit. The next one is conclusion. So in the conclusion, that's when we restate the main points, especially those which have to be remembered on the part of our audience. Okay? And of course, we have to also end strongly and positively. We always have to thank our listeners for listening to us, for um, coping with our mistakes if there are okay we thank them for lending an ear or giving us a portion of their timer spending at least a few minutes listening to our presentation the crucial part here is the ability to handle the q and a portion or the question and answer portion it is when we entertain random questions from our audience. So it is important here that we have to be honest if we don't know the answer. We can tell them that at this point, perhaps I don't have the answer, but I will get back to you if I have the answer already. Or I'll try my best to answer to the best of my ability. Something like that. Okay, And of course, we have to always keep our cool sometimes there is a tendency for us to be pissed off probably because of an impolite audience or rude audience okay but then again you have to always remember that you are speaking in front of a large number of people so you have to always keep your cool and of course like what you did at the conclusion part of your presentation always Thank your audience for supporting you, for listening to you. Now, let's move on to designing visuals, which is equally important because visuals would help catch the attention of your audience. And not only catch the attention of your audience, it would also help sustain the interest of your audience until the end of your presentation. We have text visuals and we have graphic visuals. Text visuals would refer to the actual text which we present or which we include in our presentation. As much as possible, less is more in making visuals because we would not want our audience to put more attention on reading the visuals rather than listening to our presentation. The next one is on graphic. As much as possible, we avoid all those crazy transitions and animations so that we would not distract our audience and the focus would be on the text or on the graphic itself and not on the transition or animation per se. When it comes to web-based presentations such as this, we would also like to focus on the following benefits. So one would be unlimited file sizes. It would not take up that much memory or storage in your gadget. And of course, it's also more accessible so long as you have internet connection. Whether or not you have internet connection, you can also access these in an offline mode. What else? We can have an easier means of sharing files through the cloud-based storage. And of course, analytics would tell us about how many downloads or views our presentations have had. So examples of cloud-based presentations here would be Google Slides, Prezi, and so on and so forth. Now, how do we keep our audience engaged during an online presentation? Number one is increase your visibility. As much as possible, you go on cam. But then again, if you're saving up on bandwidth, it's okay that you go offline so long as you check up on your 
listeners or your viewers from time to time. The next one is leverage your voice as much as possible if you can modulate it and practice. It's all, it always helps to practice before the actual presentation. The third one is you embrace the pause. Do not talk in a very fast manner as if someone is chasing you so that you would not distract your audience, nor talk in a very slow manner that would make your audience sleep. The next one is start on time. Avoid Filipino time. Uh, you respect the time of your audience, of your viewers. Next is plan interaction. The nice thing about virtual presentations would be your audience can also answer or ask questions in the chat box. And then, of course, it's the speaker's choice if he or she would want to answer them while he is delivering the speech or after he delivers his or her talk. The next one is visually reinforce key points. If it's possible for you to make use of bold face for the text visuals for key points, or if it's another, another option there would be you can make use of bigger fonts for important terminologies. Next is you create word pictures. Put appropriate graphics or pictures that would complement your presentation. The next one is simplify your slides. Again, warning against very colorful or very animated transitions. Number nine is use purposeful movement. Avoid mannerisms that would distract your audience as well. And then number 10, of course, in as much as you start on time, you also end on time. Take note, your audience would also do something else aside from watching your presentation. Now, the second part of this presentation is on the use of technology for communication. We have diverted into this particular new normal, as what we call it. We are digital in a sense that everything goes online. Almost everything is online already. Almost everything is virtual. That's why uh, one illustration for group communication is what we actually do now. We have online learning. So when we communicate through technology, we have synchronous and asynchronous communication. Synchronous communication is when we communicate with each other in real time. We see each other. We talk to each other in real time through the use of um, video conference. Whereas when we say asynchronous communication, it would be left to the audience to view the message or to listen to the message at their own convenient time. So examples of group communication through technology would be teleconferencing. So we in online classes, we do that. In, in the business sector, they do that also when they have their online business presentations. For the government, they also do that when they have their press conference in a virtual mode. And when we talk about teleconferencing, we also associate it with the concept of teleworking and the digital workplace because everyone is almost working at home at this point in time. So we have to uh, appreciate the fact that we can still work even if we are not in our actual physical offices. And the last concept under technology and communication would be on the evaluating of websites. When we use technology as our reference, we have to be careful and critical when it comes to using certain websites that would count as our valid sources. Why? Because not all websites are authentic or not all websites are credible. Some might be credible, but not all contents are 
reliable. You apply your critical thinking skills and do not be very vulnerable unless the information that you encounter in these websites are authentic. Thank you very much for listening to our lecture.